Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm joined here with only Mr. Malota today because, you know, uh, Marcus got hit by our country's lovely load shedding, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the show must go on. And, you know, I'll start off with saying that yesterday, Chelsea got knocked 3-0 by Sheffield United. And the top four race, even top three race, is all in United sense. It's all in yeah. United sense. And... If we win every game, we will get there, I'm sure. And Malato, how big of an opportunity do you think the Southampton game is? It's massive, because it's a game we should win. And like when Chelsea lost the city, I was so happy. Like I'm chilling with the Chelsea fans, so I was trying to keep my composure, but I was over the moon. Like to think when we came back from lockdown, we were eight points from third. Now what's what? Two points or so. That's that's incredible. Yeah, it's it's all it's all in our hands though. And what I will say is, though, I'm kind of worried because, you know, every time the perfect opportunity that comes to United to get yeah. the three points and make that top four, we just, like, we bottle it. Let's be honest, we've been bottling it, but, you know, we didn't have the players we have now. We never had the fit, all of them fit. And there was always some issues. Now there's no excuses and United should definitely get the three points. And what I will say is, if United do get these three points, I think for me that's, because I've been on the fence a little bit about United's current form. I think for me, if United can secure those three points against Southampton, I think there's I've turned a corner and I think I've, I'll start to see some real progression in United's team. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it'll show a lot of growth because, as you say, we've seen in the past, like the window of opportunity is open and then we've bottled it because we're not good enough. So I think with the squad, we should do it. And Southampton's not an easy team. I mean, they're doing very well right now. They beat Man City. Danny Ings is scoring every week. So they won't be easy. But I'm confident with our squad and our consistency right now that we can do it. Yeah, and definitely. And, what, and how much different of an opposition do you think Southampton is compared to the likes of the Villas we've been playing, you know, the Brightons and all of those guys? Do you think they the quality is much more? Do you think they still play similar? What, what are your thoughts on Southampton? Yeah, I think they play similar football to Brighton in the sense that they're very good defensively, but they're not to take care of the ball. And they're a very good outlet when it comes to Danny Ings. On top of that, they're on form. So there's a lot of confidence in the dressing room. And they'll be looking at this game and saying, it's a free hit, it was safe. And yeah, let's go try and beat Man United. So I think in terms of how they play, they'll play a lot like, like Brighton, but maybe because of their form, they might cause us more trouble than Brighton did. Yeah, definitely. I think so. And I think, you know, it's Southampton. It's just... I don't know, I can't remember exactly what our past history is like with Southampton, but for me, I've always felt them to be like kind of the bogey team for United to slip off. I'm not so. sure if you remember. Yeah, I, what was the last result when we played Southampton? I remember, I'm when, sure we we drew, drew, I remember when we drew 2-2 two, two to them like, when Mourinho was around, that was hard, bro. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. you know, I think this is a massive game for United. I really hope the boys can pull it through. And, I, you know, I think with the way United's playing and, you know, the way... Just the camp is, Oli is, I think we can do it. Do you think Oli will maybe be more conservative this match, as in like the play style? Or do you think he's going to try do what we've been doing to the other teams and boss the game completely, try put in three bags of goals there? Mm, it'll be interesting, eh? Because I feel like we saw a slight difference between the way we played against Sheffield and Brighton and the way we played against Villa. Against Sheffield and Brighton, we were extremely expensive. And we were pressing very high. And I guess that's because we knew we can dominate them and score loads of amount of goals against them. Against yeah. Villa, tried to go a little bit on the counter. But because we've got such big players in the midfield, we're still able to control the midfield. So in this game, knowing Ole, I think he might play a little safe and try and um, express our high ability on the counter. So you think we could, you could possibly see like United's all counter-attacking football? I don't think as bad as back, back then. I think because we've got Matic, Pogba and Fernandez, when we get the ball, because there will be times we have to hold the ball. It's how a football match works. I think yeah. we'll be more productive than we've been in the past. We won't be like to sit back and counter and absorb so much pressure from the opposition. So I think we might even have the possession. But I don't think we'll press as high as we saw in the other games because I think he'll put respect on Southampton because they've been doing very well. Mm. What, what I will say is, is I've been seeing a lot on social media that, you know, some United fans are kind of seeing this as a good thing that Chelsea lost in the sense that, you know, they have a feeling United might bottle it. 
and you know, mm. might drop points mm. against Southampton. But what I would ask you is two questions. If we lose against, the first question is, if we lose against Southampton, is the top four race still there or is it gone? Or do you, and the second question is, actually, I forgot my second question. But yeah, so the first question. Then. It's not gone, but like, we'll be making things incredibly hard for ourselves. When we've been given like an easy opportunity to make top four, and then face Leicester while we're in the top four. Because let's just say we don't win this game. Now we're relying on, in terms of Chelsea, the Chelsea perspective, we're relying on Liverpool beating them. And I don't know. Like, I don't trust Liverpool that much anymore. On top of that, I think there's three games left in the season. So we have to win this game. Like, I'll be very upset if we don't win this game, to be honest. That's true. Oh, yeah. That, that was my second question, actually. That kind of reminded me. I was going to ask that if United did somehow drop points or lost this game, you know, draw or loss, would you, how, how angry would you be at Oli? Or do you think that, you know, we've gone 18 games unbeaten, you know, we, ha- we haven't lost in so long, you know, do you, do you let, do you let the boys get away with it or what, or would you be furious? I don't, honestly, I think I'd be furious because we've been doing it for so long, but we can't do it when it matters. I feel like that's counterprodu- counterproductive. We have to do it when it matters, get over the line. If we don't do that, that's just, this doesn't show growth. It shows that we're still that team that's, need, that's very far away from winning a championship. And with the squad we've got right now, we can't afford to be slipping up. The squad we've got right now, the, at least the starting lineup and the form we've been putting, that's, that's championship form. And you need to get over the line. It doesn't matter if you're leading most of the race, but at the end, you don't win. You lost mm. and we made yeah. top four. So we really need to beat Southampton. This is, mm. this is the opportunity. This is top four. Yeah. Because I was thinking... I, I can't... I, you know, I, I don't. This is this is not hundred percent. But I was speaking to Marcus yesterday, and we were talking about it. And I'm like, I'm standing to be corrected. Marcus can tell you when he's on the next show. But I think Marcus. The, the reason I brought up the question is because Marcus was saying that you know, how mad can you really be if we do slip up? You know, we're bound to slip up eventually. And 18 games plus to go unbeaten is a long, long period for United. And you know, it's just like you know, these boys aren't going to get rest. And you know, I was looking at our fixtures list. We're playing Southampton. We have to play Chelsea, then Crystal Palace, and then West Ham as well, all in the space of like four days. And I thought the, the last game would come sooner in between this, so that was an opportunity to rest. So I think we might, if we do have to risk resting players, I think we should rest them in possibly the Palace game and the West Ham game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I agree with you 100%. And I think, like, how, how can you be mad when you've been doing so well? But, like, I feel like this is the chance. And no, yeah. losing, like I feel, I would excuse it if Charles had won their game. It'd be fine. Like um, there's still an opportunity, and you know, and that's actually kind of ironic because if Charles had, yeah, if Charles, yeah. had Charles had won, it'd be even harder for us. But like yeah. the fact that the opportunities opened up so much, like they just have to do it. Really, I don't know. No, what yeah, and, yeah, and then I, I would agree with that as well. I think that you know, yeah, the boys they have been on this amazing run, and it's bound to end at some point. But that's why I said, if we can beat Southampton, then, you know what, for me, I'm starting to think now we have turned the coin. Because in this type of game, where, you know, like, you, you, be you're getting complacent, yeah. I, and I don't want complacency to come, you know. I guess yeah. we have been doing well. But get that game done. You know, get that game. We can talk about resting players at Palace and then playing our strongest team against Chelsea and all those things. But, yeah, the, I think the Southampton game is going to be one of the most crucial games we've had since the lockdown resumed. And I think that you know, it's it's all on United's hands. It's it's up to them whether or not they want top four I European think... football. But yeah, to be honest, right? I think we can win every game to the end. With the show, with the form is shown. But then I feel like he has to be very strategic about how he rests players. Yeah. Because we've seen that Frey can do it. Frey is not a horrible player. McTominay is not a horrible player. So maybe try integrate them to the squad for a few games here and there, and maybe you won't drop points. But. I don't. I think maybe playing every the same squad till till the end of the season, you might be awesome for trouble. Yeah, I think you definitely are. But that again, it shows the problem because we have seen this team without Bruno and Pogba. And if you had to play with Tomini and Fred and Matic, it, it's uh, nothing happens. Like as great as our front three still is, you know, if we don't have that link up, it seems like nothing ever happens. And Rashford has to do it on his own. Mason is so young, has to do it on his own. Tony has to again do it on his own. So, yeah, that's the thing. And I'm just looking at our pictures now. So, we're playing Southampton, obviously, tomorrow, Monday. Then the Palace game is on Thursday. And then we're playing Chelsea on Sunday. And then West Ham on Wednesday. And then Leicester on Sunday. So, those are the games 
that are mm. very close to each other. So I, we play full strength. I'm thinking if I was Ali Khan Solskjaer, we play full strength against Southampton. Then on Thursday, possibly take a hit against Palace. You know, play. I I don't know who I'd, I'd probably maybe play Williams. I'd maybe try play. Well, I'll try play Fred. One of the mm. midfielders, I think. I play one of the midfielders, and you see that it's again. It just shows how tough. It is because you don't want to do so much because we've seen United without our first team players and it's horrible. Mm-hmm. What I've noticed in the past few games is that in the second half, he doesn't sub off both Pogba and Bruno. And I've realized mm-hmm. that it's kind of helped because the level doesn't drop that much. So I think don't rest them at the same time. Maybe we waste one of them in one game and the other another. Yeah, game. one of them. Yeah. yeah. So I think. <laughs> so yeah, yeah they have, you see the midfield is. Like, you know, Fred was amazing before Pogba and Bruno came. But, you know, Pogba and Bruno have raised that the quality so much in that midfield. It's like, yeah, the drop-off is ridiculous. And, you know, we have seen teams, our team bottle it. So, yeah, maybe take the hit against Palace. Then Chelsea, we obviously have to play full strength. Then a, a hit against West Ham, I would generally say that's okay. But the recent yeah. form West Ham has been in, and there's still a couple of games till we play them, so their form could dot, drop yeah. again. But the form West Ham is in is it's scary, and you wouldn't want to rest players against them either if you had a job. Look, I won't lie, I'm not scared of West Ham. Like if I was to rest any, I'd rest against West Ham. I'm scared of Palace because I know what they can do. They they have been giant killers here and there, and they've got Zaha and they've got good players. So to be honest, if I was to rest anyway, it'd be against West Ham. You rest them against West Ham. Yeah. And then play full strength against Leicester, obviously, which is our last game. Yeah, yeah. That's considerably a strong squad against Crystal Palace. Yeah, I think if United everything goes to plan, United could have the top four race sealed up quick. But I still have a feeling that this top four race what? is going to go down to that last game. Do I don't want that. You know? I want I want us to be in the top four when it comes to the last game because yeah, I don't want that pressure in my life. But yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and but that's why I the think... Southampton game is so important. Yeah, I think Southampton and Leicester definitely play the first team and just try mess around with it with Crystal Palace and West Ham. Yeah, because I'm also looking at the, the league table now, right? Leicester are playing today and we're playing tomorrow, obviously. And, you know, OK, if Leicester wins, they get 62 points. But then you see in United, but if United win, we can still go fourth and above Chelsea because Chelsea are on 60 points now after they lost against Sheffield. We won 58. So... It's, it's there, and we still have to play Leicester, like we said on the last day. So it's there. Top four is there, and you know United have to secure it. They have to secure it, and you know we've seen so many weird results after lockdown resumed. You know we've seen Liverpool lose points. Yes, people will say that you know they're complacent, and that's fine. I'm I'm happy with Liverpool guys being complacent, their fans being complacent. I think that's their problem. But we've seen City also drop silly points here and there. We've seen Chelsea getting. Luck. I've been watching a lot of Chelsea. They've been getting lucky on their games, and they finally got. A result they deserved, which was against Sheffield. And you know, United, by that first opening game against Spurs, we've been pretty good, and we are one of the best teams in the league at the moment. So, yeah, I just I don't want to be disappointed. To me, that, to me, this is a big game. It's a very big game, and I think United and Oli, and I hope they, and I think they will take this game very seriously because Oli did say what a dangerous team Southampton can be. And yeah, I'm looking forward to. It. Yeah, and I think you know with the way United are playing, that you know they should get the results, and you know. Before we go to the predicted eleven, is there anything more you want to say on Southampton? They're, they're a good team. Like if we're not on it, we saw they beat Man City. And yes, I know Man City have been up and down, and they've got Danny Ings, top goal scorer, as I already hinted at. So, and the managers are very, very good. The defensively, they're very solid. Like you know, there's just a classic Premier League team that can, gives the big teams a problem. So if we're not on it, we could we could lose this game, but. I'm gonna. I'm trusting my boys, and I think we'll, we'll get the three points. I also do think we'll get to the three points. And you know, with this predicted eleven, oh, it's been a blessing. So it really has been a blessing. <laughs> we haven't been able to just sit back and know what our starting eleven should be. And I doubt really? that this will change. Do you, do you think there's any chance that Oli might change something? I feel like this will be the wrong day game to try and rest. <laughs> so I don't think so. But like, as you say, like, it is a blessing. For so long, for so many years, pundits have gone in about what's the best 11. And that's been a problem with consistency. And we're seeing now because we're playing 
game in game out. The players understand them, each other very well, and we're getting consistent results. So it's amazing that Ole, someone who's gone so much stick, has managed to come in this club, get the best signings any manager's gotten, and get a consistent lineup. So I think we have to applaud him for that. But I think we'll see this lineup again. I also think so. I'm, yeah, I'm just, you know, again, like the importance of resting our players is it's very crucial. But ah, it's, it's so tough. As a, for for Ali, it's going to be so tough. Exactly. Like who are you going to rest? Like, and, you know, if you do rest someone, it's such a the 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 drop off is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe you could afford to rest Mason <laughs> because I think we'll still have enough. And the fullbacks. Brandon Williams is a good replacement, but do you really need? I guess one Basaka all the time. So maybe play Brandon Williams or one Basaka. I don't know. Mm. I wouldn't miss Greenwood for the simple fact is that you know he hasn't played really that much this season. He has played a lot, but you know I think he's still young. I think he's in the form of his life. And I think you know for the yeah, and I think for the remainder of the season, this boy could possibly play every game. And he's mm. like yeah, and I think Oli came out and said you don't rest your goal scorers. I think he did say that. So I don't see him resting Martial. I don't see him resting Greenwood, Bruno. I, I don't ever see him resting Pogba. No Matic, possibly, but I still doubt it. If we do rest Matic, if okay, if we do have to like in a in this case scenario, if we had to rest Matic, would you bring in McTominay or Fred? He's my wife. I think Fred makes more sense. I feel like McTominay. We can see there's a future there, but like I don't know. Since he's come back, the form has been quite iffy. With Fred, I feel like as much as he started poor against Tottenham, we've seen a little bit of a pickup when he's come off the bench at halftime. So I'd play him. But then, to be honest, considering what we're doing before the lockdown, I think maybe we could survive if we drop Pogba. I think maybe dropping McTominay or, or Fernandez is a bit too risky because I feel like their roles are so integral. Mm. I just yeah. I don't I don't see Oli dropping Pogba yet because you know I think maybe Oli's thinking that you know Pogba hasn't played all season. There's a few good games for him to you know get back to. Yeah. He needs to be confidence, you know, be yeah. feel a part of this team. So Pogba could be an interesting one, but I doubt it. I I, I highly doubt it. And then yeah, you know, know you look at that. Yeah, I'm dropping. Like, yeah, honestly. And if you I look at that back be... line also, oh. Unless I think yeah, unless you said like you said, unless it's one of the fullbacks for Williams, I don't see that backline changing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, a, it's a difficult one really because <laughs> you want to play your start your best starting up every game, but one can say that's not realistic. So yeah. maybe at the end of the season we don't know, but we've got a yeah, good thing going. Hopefully we can carry I on think- that. Yeah, and I think the fans are kind of split and when to rest, when not to rest. You know, some fans are like, no, this first team should be able to play every game from now till the end of the season at least. You know, they should be that fit. And you get the other guys saying, no, we, do, we shouldn't do that. You know, we run the risk of injury. Or, you know, if someone is super tired, you know, they could pull their late hamstring. And we obviously, we don't want that. We just got our team back after this whole lockdown scenario. And we, we finally had them. For a few mm-hmm. weeks, and you know, we don't want anything to happen to them. We want to protect them. So yeah, I do. I do get both case scenarios where people are saying don't rest, and I do get the scenarios where people say rest. But I think for this game, I'm gonna lean on the side of don't rest as well because, like I said, this game is very important, and I really, really want the three points. And I think Oli does have to get the three points. I think this team needs the three points, and then hopefully, you know, get us some breather. I think there'll be less pressure. And, you know, I think we should get the results. So, what is your score prediction? I don't think we'll thrash them. I don't think the, it will be as easy as the other teams. But I think we'll win. And I think, as we've as we hinted at, this will be a statement. win. Like, in the past, we've struggled with games like this. And I think we will slay our demons. And I think we'll beat them 2-0. No. Mm. Similar to mine, I'm going to go with 2-1. I think this is going to be a squeaky bum game. I'll be honest with you. I do think it's going to be really tough. But yeah, you know, I think I think I'm looking forward to it. And I yeah, I cannot emphasize how important this game is. But anyways, thanks. Thank you all for watching. Please do consider hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. And to everyone who watches our videos, a huge shout out and thank you to you. We appreciate the support. 
And feel free to express your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below and we'll check in the next one.